Let's talk homeschool schedule. If you could have anybody over for dinner tonight, who would you invite? Today's video is sponsored by Sensodyne and I was honestly so excited when they reached out because I literally use Sensodyne toothpaste every single day. About a year ago, I started having a lot of tooth sensitivity and when I ate cold things, it hurt so bad and I was really concerned there was something wrong. So I went to the dentist and luckily no cavities. He told me that I was just experiencing tooth sensitivity and so he told me to start using Sensodyne toothpaste. I stopped at the pharmacy on my way home that day and it has made a huge difference. Jeremy and I both use Sensodyne toothpaste exclusively now and my teeth feel so much better. Hand models make this look so easy. There's not like an unawkward way to open a toothpaste. Take control of sensitivity and improve gum health with Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum. Click the link in our description box to learn more. Today we're doing a simple art project together. Step one, take the impossible paper off the crayon. So this is a great project to use broken crayons on too. So today we're gonna make wax paper butterflies. And this is a project that I did when I was a little girl, probably about your age. Take a piece of paper and you're gonna fold it in half and then you're gonna draw half of a butterfly. So the next step is to break up the crayons into tiny, tiny pieces. So they recommend doing that with a small, like handheld pencil sharpener, which we don't have. So we're improvising. I tried the grater that just made like dust. So now I'm trying the knife and the knife is actually working pretty well. So then what you do is you guys are gonna take the color you choose and you spread it in the area where you want it to be. Are we gonna put it in the microwave? We do have to heat it up and melt it, but we're not gonna use the microwave. Any other guesses? I saw the box, so I know what it is. What is, is it? it? An iron. Yep. This is not as easy as I imagined. So Isaac, when I first looked over, I thought you were cutting a carrot. Yeah. I'm more like shredding it. I'm feeling a little concerned. I literally have no idea if this is gonna work or not. Elise is basically shaving the crayon. Ah! <laughs> Seriously though, sometimes when we're working on projects and things aren't going according to plans, I feel myself like getting frustrated and irritated. And really though, the whole point of the project is to explore and play and experiment and do something new together as a family. And we have legit never cut carrots before. Yes! <laughs> and we have legit never cut crayons before as a family. We're trying new things today. Yeah, cut the carrots. <laughs> well, they're kind of similar to carrots. Elise has finished the yellow portion of her cutting. As it finished up the orange. I like your shirt today, bud. Yeah, thanks. A little kindness can change everything. And Jeremy, I like your outfit. Is this day like four? <laughs> I love you. I shouldn't give you a hard time just because I actually got dressed today. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm gonna try to make a monarch, but a little different with some like navy in it. So I went with green, yellow, and blue. So here's where Laura is at. This That's is so a lot fun. of pink, Daddy. Isaac's almost done with his. So I took the paper and I put wax paper on both sides of it so that it doesn't catch fire. Genius. We also don't own an ironing board, but we have an iron. So I just laid out this little rug and we'll see how this goes. I'm definitely not letting any of my kids handle the iron today. Maybe we should have said we were doing a science experiment today instead of an art project. So now we're gonna open it up and reveal the inside. So see the crayons all melted. I don't think you'll be able to open it. Oh, well, that's what it did. It makes more textures. And then I just cut back out along the lines that I drew earlier. There we have a butterfly. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah. Here's Elise's butterfly before. Here's Isaac's, here's Laura's, here's Caleb's. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's unicorn throw up. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what happened with hers is it actually already dried some, and so it dried only down instead of across, so it looks like you need to open them right away. We're gonna try Elise's again to see if we can, there we go. Whoa! I think it looks pretty good. I think Laura did it in a really smart way because she spread it out so much. Interesting. All right, there's Laura's. Here's how it, it turned out. out. exactly how I wanted it to be. Is that how you pictured it? Yeah. This one's Caleb's. I can see eyes in that. Perfect mouth, nose, eyes. Hung up the butterflies. It really shows how vibrant the colors are. Ice cream soup. I can make an ice cream cake. First, I need a big blue pan. She's reading so well. We're really proud of her. Now it is composition time, and the kids take this extremely seriously. So seriously. Every day there's a different prompt and they write a response trying to focus on handwriting, spelling, and Laura copies words. Mom, Laura. One day we wrote a story about the Easter Bunny being sad and they got to finish off the story or another day they got to say what the most important meal of the day was and explain their answer. Today's prompt was if you could have anybody over for dinner tonight, who would you choose and why? Their answers were so amazing. I just love hearing how their brains work and it's a good exercise to try to put stuff on paper and have fun with it. It was a hard choice. I was leaning toward Limo Miranda or Patrick Mahomes and I ended up going with Patrick Mahomes. I would choose my best friends from Kansas City. I chose either an ancestor that I didn't get the chance to know that well or my future self. Um, that blows my mind. What would you talk to your future self about? What's going on in life? So which ancestor would you want to get to know? Either Grandma Chris or Grandpa Coy, probably. Well, I didn't write a paper, but my answer to who I would have for dinner tonight, first response would have been our friends from Kansas City. I just miss them and it would be so fun to have friends for dinner. But after hearing Isaac's response, I would change my answer and I would choose my Grandma Chris. She passed away when Isaac was just barely two years old and so she hasn't gotten to meet most of my kids and I would love to have her for dinner. If you could have anybody over for dinner tonight, who would you invite? Let us know in the comments. So Janae went down for a nap, and when she woke up, she told everyone she grew. How much did you grow? Right there. <gasps> You're so big. It's from here. From here. Whoa. You're taller than me. Uh -huh. And I'm taller than mom. You're taller than me now? Yeah. That was quite the nap. Yesterday the kids were playing in the baby pool that we have. We asked one of the kids to turn the hose off and the kid thought they had done that but they actually turned it all the way on. And then the kids came inside and the hose was running all night. We didn't realize until this morning and it was just an honest mistake but we were explaining to the kids how big of a deal that is and how much that can cost and how wasteful it is. But those kinds of mistakes happen. And Kendra and I weren't angry at all, we just really wanted to use it as a teaching opportunity and the importance to try to make sure that when we're asked to do something, it's important to really follow through. And of course, as parents, we needed to follow through as well. So today, Isaac finished Papa's life story. What are you doing now? I want to like keep a journal of my life so I can remember these times better. He busted out the baby book. Yep. You're reviewing some stories of when you were little. Uh huh. This is my favorite picture of like when I was born. Eleven years ago. Time goes so fast. <laughs> Love this. Halloween. I was in law school. Yeah. We sure love ya. So what kind of stuff are you writing in your journal? Experiences. Some of your favorite memories, yeah. things you learned. Luckily, early. it's not too hard. If I forget some that were during the vlog, I can just go to it. The vlog will be helpful. We always have viewed the vlog as kind of a journal. Yeah. So I've currently been thinking a lot about the concept that discipline equals freedom. Jocko Willing talks about this. I really respect him and the message that he shares. 
I've realized that over the last couple years, I've allowed some of my discipline to shrink. I'm not, I haven't been as dedicated to hard work and sacrifice and some of the pain that comes along with really pushing yourself to be your best self. And I'm starting to feel this seed of desire to really start stepping it up to be more disciplined. And I really think that I am a happier person and I have more freedom in my life when I am disciplined and really having integrity to my own desires of being the best version of myself. Sauteing some onions to add to the soup. We're having chicken tortilla soup for dinner tonight. And here's chicken tortilla soup. We're adding tortilla chips on top because yum. It's delicious? Yeah. You're liking it? Uh huh. Let's talk homeschool schedule. Our homeschool schedule is really relaxed. It's more of a rhythm of our day and it's what works for our family. So what happens is in the morning, everybody wakes up and the kids have a checklist of the things that they know they need to get done in the morning. So they work through that on their own. They do their piano, they do a chore, they get dressed and make their bed. And the last thing on that checklist says hug mom. And so what's great about that is they come and they connect with me and kind of I can kind of go through their checklist and make sure that it all got done, make sure nobody forgot to brush their teeth. Um, then we start school time. And during school time, the three big kids also have a list of their school requirements. They're really familiar with them for, by this point because they've been doing it for a really long time. And they can work through them in whatever order they want to. So for example, math, they each do 30 minutes of math each day, but I don't care if they do that first or if they wait a little bit and do their math. So they just get started on their schoolwork. That's what's required. The little girls, Laura and Janae, start their school day with me. And so it's kind of mom time. It's about 20 or 30 minutes. I'll do some music time with them. We'll sing and dance. Maybe we'll do some story time. Maybe we'll get out some sensory play and do some Play-Doh together or something else. Something that I'm engaging with them right off the bat. And I find when I engage with the little girls right away in the morning, that then they go off and they play creatively and happily for a lot longer so that I can get some stuff done at that point. So that's when I start dinner, do some laundry, and help the big kids with whatever schoolwork they need to get done. We break for lunch around 11.30 to 12.30, and we all eat lunch together. We try to clean up lunch together, still working on that. Um, and then we go into quiet time. Quiet time's from about 12.30 until 2.30. Janae naps some days, some days it's just quiet time. But either way, that's my time to be able to have one-on-one -on -one time with Laura. Laura's in kindergarten, so that's when we do her math and her reading and her handwriting, and I really just enjoy that special time with her. I also help any of the other kids that are doing some schoolwork that they need more one-on-one -on -one help with. And if I'm really lucky, I can take like five deep breaths by myself. Not always possible. Around 5.30 or 6 p.m. we eat dinner as a family and then we clean up as a family. And that's a really big deal to me because I feel like we're all a team working together to take care of our home and our family. Um, we clean up the kitchen and we clean up the front room, kind of just tidy up to get ready for the next day. Around seven, the kids get ready for bed and around 7.30, Janae goes to bed. And that's when we do family scripture study and prayer. And when I do our chapter book read aloud with the big kids. Caleb and Laura go to bed around eight, and then Isaac and Elise are allowed to stay up and read until about 8.30 p.m., then they go to bed. So that's our day. In the evening, I have a chance to hopefully relax for at least a moment and prep for the next day. I also get up around six o'clock in the morning, an hour before the rest of my family, so that I can have my prayer time and my reading scriptures, gratitude work, kind of a deep breath to be ready for the day at that point. So that's our homeschool schedule. It's been mostly the same for a really long time. It works really well for us to have independence for the kids, but also structure. They know what their expectations are and I follow up with it. Um, it gives us time as a family, but also time to work apart. So it just works for us. It never works perfectly. There's no schedule out there that works perfectly. Every day still has its challenges, but this general flow gives the structure to our day. Thank you to Sensodyne for sponsoring our video today. Good night, Jay House out. So we're gonna try to go on a glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt.